Good morning. Welcome to Terra at Home. We're uh, back with Michelle here today, and uh, we are talking now interior. Last week we were talking exterior of your home. Now we're talking about changing things up a little bit, warming things up for the fall as we transition from summer to fall to winter. And we all know that happens very quickly. It does happen very quickly. And, uh, and just kind of taking a look around at your house and how you can uh, just sort of change things up just a little bit. So starting to pull Simple. away maybe some of those, you know, those mangoes and, and bright turquoise colors that we had from the summer, the yellows, and sort of just reach more for fall tones. Yes, which I think everyone associates orange with fall. Yes. I think that's just a natural mm -hmm. progression of what the color is, mm -hmm. but some of the other colors like the, the mustards and the yes. reds are really quite nice too. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I think is the easiest thing to switch up in a room is your pillows. Yes. Because it's just nice to have fresh look of pillows. So you can mm -hmm. do something very neutral with reds, or you could do something bright and fun because it is a short season. Yeah, these are kind of fun. These, like, these sort of little whimsical guys, the little foxes. The and, little foxes and And butterflies. I really like the, um, again, kind of still looking very much, I think overall, uh, the theme that we're seeing from, from outdoors last week to this week, interior, uh, a lot of very natural materials. So, you know, just seeing some of these, you can see that just the natural tones and some of these pillows and that are just so beautiful. Um, and it really, again, it's a nice neutral warmth. It is very neutral mm -hmm. and it is warm. Like even if you look at these placemats. Love these, those. These just look like oh, a nice it. piece of wood on your mm -hmm. table. And these come in different colors. They of do. So there's like wood. a deeper walnut kind of color, a more mm -hmm. gray wood, mm -hmm. um, a more pine wood. I liked this one because it's like very, very neutral. And if you look at it with like sort of the burlapy, it's in that mm -hmm. family, right? Exactly. But it's simple. You just change up some pillows, change up some placemats. Yes fun pieces of glass. I think these are really quite neat. Okay, yeah, these are cool. So again, we're, we're looking at, so here's a little owl guide. So you could use that as a vase, or maybe you stick lic licorice sticks in it for, you know, towards Halloween, yes. or multiple purposes. Mm -hmm. The apple is more of just a put on your mantle, or put on your table, or maybe put three of them. Mm -hmm. There's pumpkins, there's vases, there are and it's simple. And then they're beautiful pieces of glass. And you know what's fun, I think, when you have uh, particular pieces that you, you have in your home at certain seasons, you pack them away, you know, wrap them all up, put them in your basement or wherever you store them, and then you pull them out again. It's exciting for you as well because I know a lot of times I'm like, oh, I forgot I had that. I love this. I love, I love being able to redecorate. And again, it's just, you know, and, and, and every year you just add a couple little pieces and that's what's great about it. So, you know, you can't help yourself when, uh, you know, when you walk into to Tara to maybe just, okay, I'm just going to pick up one little piece and add it to, right. you know, or five or six. <laughs> but it is fun. It's, it's fun easy. to make it very specific and it's really easy to transition your home again from season to season by just adding little pieces little pieces and it, it can be very inexpensive too mm -hmm. you don't have mm -hmm. to spend a fortune um, some of the really I think neat things this year are the wood mm -hmm. like so we talked about the wood placemat but then you actually have wood plates and wood trays mm -hmm. which these are nice. you can transition those really into any season but I feel like that warmth that firewood kind yes. of feeling for fall yes um, the napkin rings mm -hmm. are quite neat mm -hmm. so tie it on the napkin rings with the burlap and then these are so cool they're really quite fun because they're elastics they're so I have to tell you I was wearing one in my hair last week <laughs> I love that that's awesome but you know what I can see so many people wanting to do that and like come on now they could that. that's pretty awesome it is really quite cute I mean you think about it it's like right up there it's beautiful oh, right I love it these so, are so they're quite fun. fun yeah and as you say really it's just something really little simple little things but these are really fantastic and these can carry right through into the Christmas season as well again yes, because yeah. you could use these as you know as your, your your chargers for your plates and then adding just maybe a little bit of some fresh greens around it you can yeah. see how it put a white plate on top of plate. that would be mm -hmm. really really pretty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah lots of options there yeah so. very very nice and so again it's really about the uh, sort of that natural again you're saying the burlaps and the woods and really just sort of uh, you know again just adding little pieces here little and pieces. there charges are easy as well like or the placemats just different yeah. things like that I mean you just look at what we've got here and it's very little but you can already get a sense of fall right mm -hmm. yes you can so which is quite nice mm -hmm. one of the other things that um, we're seeing a lot of people do now is mm -hmm. transition wall art mm -hmm. so instead of having the same thing on their walls all season yes. they're changing things up uh, and one of the big things that we're transitioning into is chalk mm -hmm. um, so these ones oh, backwards 
backwards. There we go. Uh, the owl is really fun. I love it. It's fun for, you know, Thanksgiving dinner. You could write your meal plan on there or notes oh, cool. to the kids or whatever. And then you saw the birds that were sitting beside me. Yes. There's leaf wall art. You know, there's actual photograph paintings. All, all different things that you can mm -hmm. add to your walls for fall and change it up. I know I at home in my house, we have maps and we were constantly changing yes. the maps up in our house just so that it's always a little bit different. But that's There's, a great thing to do, it's right? A, it's just different, It's right? easy now and I think a lot of times people, you know, so you have your family photos up on the wall in your frames, but as you say, just changing up, uh, you know, I have um, this this tree picture that I have, but I, there's one with snow and then I have one that's sort of more fall and, but you can kind of even just simple ones like that, sort of indicative of the season and it is fun just to change up a couple pictures and it's, it's very cost effective now to do something like that. Again, if you have a place to store it, wrap them up, put them away, and then it's just like you're sort of freshening up your home each season by yes. doing things like that. And simple, right? Yes, exactly. Doesn't take a lot of time, doesn't take a lot of money, but no. it changes things up. And you can slowly just work your way through it if you want to start with your exterior, you know, as we did last week, and just sort of, uh, you know, start with the front step, adding some mums, adding your wreath, and as you make your way through, and again, maybe, you know, that next weekend, start pulling out some pillows, changing up your pillows, changing up just things around your house, and by the time the season hits you, you're, you're, you're ready, ready to, go. Good to go. Now, we should talk about uh, some of the beautiful, when we talk about wall art, um, we have some pieces that are for both interior and exterior, yes. that, um, again, more metalworks, that are metal. mm -hmm. um, very beautiful. It is really nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and then different shapes, again, you can mm -hmm. do rectangles, circles, uh, squares, mm -hmm. some abstract, but like you said, you could have them inside on a wall, sure or you could. could put them outside on a fence. Right, and I think that's really great. And a lot of times, you know, people are worried about trying to put those on a, on a brick wall, but it is doable. Yes. But again, as you say, you can put them anywhere. You can. So, put them anywhere. and a lot of people are really, uh, again, pieces that are good inside and outside. We're starting to see that where your inside and your outside just yes. blends into one beautiful. A lot of people have those front doors where they have the ability of a wall beside the front door to yes. do something. Yes. Yes. And then you walk into their foyer, and mm -hmm. they've got something that's like similar mm -hmm. and it's carrying the look into the home which yes. is really I think a neat idea too. I think it is too and again if you're going to start it with your your front step and and uh, you might as well slowly just carry it through and again we're getting into the the season where you're going to be starting to have a lot of people over inside your home instead yes. of the back patios we're now getting people back inside your house so think about you know your little two-piece bathroom and how you can make that feel like a good place because you know people are going there yes, right exactly again, that's a, that's a kind of a focal point of your main level of your house right if, throw, throw um, a vase in there exactly. with some silk flowers right. or like simple you know it doesn't take exactly much. and so again just creating that nice feeling of, of comfort if people come into your house and uh, through fall and through winter Christmas time you have a lot of people coming into your place yes. often and uh, just hanging out and and you really just want to make it comfortable and feel good and you want to nice be proud for them to see change too it is exactly <laughs> as we know with, with with small children we rely on our families coming in a lot yes so we got to change it up for them too so they want to come back <laughs> always good information thank you so much michelle and again it's just the little pieces that make a huge difference in your home all right we'll be back with more tara at home when i dream i dream in color when i think of color i think of tara Make your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. We're back with Dave Bachulis from Natural Landscape Magazine and you brought us to yet another uh, beautiful backyard. Yeah, one of my favorite spots actually. Yes, the audio is great. We can hear the waterfall behind us. And uh, so way back when you were brought into this backyard because to the owners, it seemed like a very difficult place to turn into anything. And I really not, weren't sure what to do because it kind of climbs on the side here and it was very just raw 
foliage, right? Yeah, it was just uh, woods. Uh, yes. You know, you walk out, you take a look out the back window and you saw a deer right in mm -hmm. this backyard. Uh, the rocks, the trees, the trilliums, the ferns, everything. And they just said to me, what can we do with this space? And mm -hmm. I had a huge smile on my face because this is where my passion was at when I started 25 years ago and which this project was halfway through that. This is, this is 10 years ago. Uh, it's, wow, eh? uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, and it's growing in so beautifully now. It has, and that's the thing. So basically when they said to you, they want to create this space, yeah. they, um, you know, yes, we're in the city. Clearly you can tell that by, you know, the surroundings, but, um, but by the sounds, I should say, but the surroundings, you would not think you are. No. So no. here you are in this space, but they wanted to make sure there were a few, few lines that they want drew, drew in the sand was they wanted to make it look as if this has just naturally been built in here. Yeah. Right? Not man hadn't designed it. No, <laughs> yeah, the flagstone you see on the ground, the mm -hmm. natural stone staircases up the hill, the mm -hmm. moss covered boulders that surround the pond. Everything that was a piece of what was existing here mm -hmm. uh, was duplicated in abundance. Mm -hmm. So when we found more stone slabs and got more stone slabs, they matched. And the wow. moss covered boulders that look like they've been here for thousands of years are the ones that were brought in to match the boulders that were here. Were and here. the focal point, the main feature of all this was that beautiful sounding waterfall that right. is right behind us. Right. And so yeah. you're saying you got right in there, hands on hands on. Yeah, I put you. down my pencil and paper as a mm -hmm. designer and mm -hmm. I got right in there, uh, got into the uh, the mud and the machines and, and helped build that waterfall and, mm. and what you see behind us there that looks natural yeah and then it really does look natural and that's and that's exactly what they wanted right they wanted to look like this waterfall just kind of parked yeah. itself here yeah many moons ago but that's right. you made it so yeah. now let's talk about the challenges that uh, did you face any personally from a design perspective and then also when finally from the mechanics of actually make getting in here and uh, the design challenges was working amongst the trees. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in some cases we have these blank pages. Mm -hmm. And in this case, I had trees that were not to be touched or moved, even down to some saplings. There are some right. wow. existing trees here that are now just kind of taking some adolescent points to them. Huh. We had to work around those, uh, bringing in the, the, the large rocks, uh, basically in cases where you want to start from the bottom and work your way up. Mm -hmm. Because we couldn't clear pathways up the side, we had the start from the top and work our way down wow. and so yeah through some uh, drainage and mechanical changes uh, mechanical um, challenges mm -hmm. uh, it was it was challenging but I'll tell you it was the most fun I've ever had mm -hmm. was working in this backyard oh how cool yeah and so they started with one area just to create an own separate haven of a hot tub covered yeah. done and then from there grew yeah, it started off with this sort of like intimate setting of a hot tub sitting on a hill in a zen-like mm -hmm. little gazebo. And uh, that was sort of the first phase of work and the staircase to go with it. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, which it was going to be like in three phases, mm -hmm. but next year when they saw the big stone slabs come in and the big rocks that started matching and as we started bringing in some of the ferns from off the woodland slope into the landscape, and as they saw the evolution of this come together, they just said, you know what, keep going. <laughs> so we, we took like it this. right across to the pond, to the fire patio that we're sitting at right now, all the way down to the next set of stairs out the side of the house. And it's all conducive to a natural woodland setting yeah. and that preservation of mother nature. It really is because when you're walking, you know, the steps are, they go up and they go down and they're, you know, there's a sense of obviously level, but yeah but it still creates that, hey, this is not, this is not perfectly man-made cut, right? It's, right? I love it, you've really created, it really is that woodlands kind of feeling, like there yeah. should be little, you know, fairies running around in here. <laughs> it's such a cool yeah. little spot. Yeah. So let's talk about other people's properties. You know, have you been faced with situations where I'm sure there are sometimes people want to do something and mm -hmm. it's just not feasible. So yeah. you have to kind of work with the client and say, okay, I can't quite maybe do that, yeah. but let's talk about this and that's what a designer's for right is to that's create right. maybe something that people just can't see yeah well people are used to the what i'll refer to as the blank page or the green space mm -hmm. and they want to start with that and you get people who have these they've inherited these beautiful woodland backyards right. and they say oh i want to level it off and i want to plow <laughs> in and of course we got to respect certain conservation laws as sure. well mm -hmm. and i try to help people to see the beauty in nature 
and how we can work with nature mm -hmm. and marry their lifestyle spaces mm -hmm. uh, around the respect of mother nature mm -hmm. and most importantly natural habitat and right. there are various ways to deal with that uh, myself who's very passionate about the outdoor woodland I've helped several people who live along the escarpment along the Bruce Trail uh, that have the responsibility to act like stewards mm -hmm. uh, and we just help them with planning to know the types of plants things that are not going to be invasive True. things that are going to attract nature help maintain habitat uh, it's all very key important things to consider when you're designing a woodland backyard. And that's the thing, some people have, you know, no experience at all with it. So they're really yeah. relying on, on you, you know, they're not even sure what half the plant life they have in their backyard, you know, what yeah. it is and, and you know, and, and they, again, it's not, it's sometimes not being able to see the possibilities within that yeah. and you being able to work in it and retain as much as nature as possible. Because as you say, there are so many backyards now that are just, you know, unfortunately, it's just the way it is with the urban yeah. sprawl, very cookie cutter, not a tree in your backyard yeah. and would just absolutely love to have something like this. Yeah. So it would be, it'd be hard for you to watch somebody clear cut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because they're also losing, um, it's almost like the when you look at the character of an old home and what you walk into mm -hmm. versus some of the newer homes nowadays, you know, yeah. um, it's the same for you as, an, you know, as basically an artist, you're walking in saying, I've already got this. Yeah. Well, you have this and let's yeah. show you how to preserve it mm -hmm. and show you how to live in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also, I mean, this is a larger space, but you can do wonders with the tiniest space, can't you? Yeah, you can actually. Yeah. I, I've actually had people who have open green space but they want this type of look right and, yes. and again you can bring that to them mm -hmm. it's just picking the right plants mm -hmm. the right combinations and to create that wonderful woodland cottage setting mm -hmm. uh, can be done in in uh, the urban sprawl so you know from again as you say more natural plant life what you would normally see growing in an environment like this yeah. get them out in the woods right trilliums may <laughs> apples <laughs> fiddlehead ferns or yes. ostrich ferns mm -hmm. Uh, these are the things that you're going to find out in Mother Nature, uh, which you can pick up even in our local garden center and, mm -hmm. you know, at Terra and, and see that put together. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to know how to plan it all out. And mm -hmm. that's what I love doing for people is awesome. putting that to paper, helping them see it on a screen yeah, and then build it for them so like this. Much fun. Yeah. So much fun, right? Yeah. And people, of course, can look at your Natural Landscapes magazine and get some good ideas in there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and all of your fun people that have come together to create this great magazine. So. Thanks, thanks, Dave. Yeah, thanks Always for great me talking out. to you, and this is such a great backyard. Thanks to the owners who we snuck in. No, they know we're here. <laughs> we'll be back with more Terra at home. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Terra. Make your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. Heritage Perennials, look for us in the blue pots. Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. We are back with Chef Mark in our kitchen today from La Piazza Allegra restaurant in Hamilton. And what are we making today? We got one of my favorite dishes to do in the fall, which is rabbit. I love braised rabbit <laughs> you know what it, it's these are farmed this right. isn't anybody's yeah. little pet he's not the guy so. that's hanging out my back no right none at all no. I know it's hard for me you know what I will eat anything and I love gaming I love elk and bison and all kinds of but I have a, a tough time with with, with rabbit. rabbit a lot mm -hmm. of people do um, it's just one of those things that once you try it though and you get beyond mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. this is a great meat because it's very lean 
Okay. There's, it's a very lean meat. It, once it's braised, it becomes very, very tender. Um, and it's just got nice flavor. It goes well with autumn vegetables and everything like that. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do here, we're going to do an old recipe I used to make all the time in the restaurant. And this one is braised with um, sage, red onions, and white wine, garlic. Oh, and then we're going to throw nice. some uh, root vegetable in there, some autumn vegetables. I brought some uh, heirloom carrots here. We have some uh, parsnip and we got some shallots that we're going to mm. use as well. Nice. Sounds great. I okay. love the idea of using heirloom carrots too. It's again, you're getting color. You're getting and color just... and flavor and mm -hmm. everything's in right. there. So. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, we have a skillet here. You need a skillet and you also need a good roasting pan. I absolutely love, this is probably my favorite pot that I use. It's a cast iron with a ceramic coating yes. on it. Just fantastic to go in the oven. They hold heat, they hold moisture. And they moisture. clean well. And they clean very, I know, very that's, well. I have one too, and that's my favorite go-to It's go the go-to, <laughs> that's right. So the rabbit itself will come whole, okay? Mm -hmm. And you have to cut it down. So you want to cut it into six. Like the whole rabbit? Yes, it's a whole rabbit. Oh. So you're going to cut it down into <laughs> six pieces, okay? <laughs> this would be the one <laughs> hind okay, leg. Yeah. This is the one hind leg. Okay. Okay. This would be the front quarter, and this would be down the middle. Is okay? it easy the body to portion. find rabbit, like um, mainstream uh, yeah. market? Do, yeah, yeah, you could find them. Yeah, All they're right. readily available, especially at this time of the year. So. <laughs> <laughs> they're not hard to come by. <laughs> and what I'm going to do here is I'm flouring it first, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to give it a quick pan fry. Okay. Could you trick people and tell them it's chicken and they wouldn't know the difference? It's hard to tell. It is hard to tell yeah. once okay. it's cooked. Um, you would be, it looks exactly the same. You'd probably be able to fool people if you want to. Mm -hmm. However, if they find out, yeah. you, you've now lost a friend, I'm sure. That's right. <laughs> I think that's kind of what happened to me when I first had it and I found out it was rabbit and it just sort of shocks you. You gotta be upfront about it, right? You do have to be upfront. But that being said, you could prepare this entire dish using chicken instead of rabbit if you really wanted to. Would the flavor still work? Well. <laughs> <laughs> like, you could. No, absolutely I mean, not. You could, but that's there, with my favorite dish. <laughs> like I said, this is rabbit. You don't eat it very often. This is the time of year to do it. Exactly. It's a, it's a great. And dish. you know what? I know some people love it so much. It's so, so it's, good. And I, you know what? And it's always great, as you say, to try, find a good recipe, a good combination of flavors, and try something maybe a meat that you haven't tried before, right. and you might just really like it. Yeah, you might. And you yeah. know what? And if you don't. Don't do it again, but at least right. you gave it a try yeah, and you said, okay, I I've tried this Absolutely. and I had it. Okay? okay? So, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna add some garlic to this now, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm also gonna add some butter. Okay. And when I say some butter, a good portion. <laughs> because it is a lean meat, you do need to add fat to it. Okay. Okay? Yeah, wow, yeah. <laughs> I'm also adding some sliced red onion. Oh, and some sage. If you can pass me the sage mm -hmm. there. And we'll clip off some sage here. I kind of associate sage with fall and winter, right? Like around Christmas. So you get that just, you know, with, with meats like turkey and all that type of thing. So, yeah. right, it is it is very indicative it's, of this time of year. It's a very savory herb. Right. And that's, that's where you get that fall, winter feeling. Sure. And you can leave them whole. Because you're braising it, the flavors will come out. Okay. If you were doing something else with this, where if you were doing something that was a little quicker service and it wasn't going to be braised for a long time, mm -hmm. what you'd want to do is just give it a couple knocks on the back with the back of a knife, score it a little bit, let those release those flavors. Okay. But All because right. it's being braised, you're you fine. can throw them in like this. Now, the vegetables, I'm not going to put the vegetables in right away because this is going to take about two to two and a quarter hours to cook. Oh, wow. The okay. vegetables, if you put them in, they're just going to become too soft and too mushy on you. Okay, so this is like a good Sunday dinner. It right? is. Yep, perfect okay. Sunday dinner. So what we're going to do with this, get all these ready, mm -hmm. and we're going to put wine into the rabbit. Mm -hmm. You're going to cook it for about an hour and a half. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Once it's cooked for about an hour and a half, that's when you're going to add these vegetables in. Now, what I did is I put enough salt and pepper in the dish that I won't need to add any more um, salt and pepper when I add these okay. root vegetables in. There's enough okay. in this whole thing to take care of what you're doing. Let's give it one more quick flip. You can see it's starting to brown up there. Mm -hmm. You're getting a nice golden color. It's actually smelling really good. It's a delicious, delicious mm -hmm. way. Now, the way we're going to serve it, we're going to leave them as whole pieces okay. and put them on the plate. But if you want, what you would do is you could let this cool down, debone it all, 
and then toss it with a pasta with a little bit more butter and some garlic parmesan. Fantastic. Ooh, that sounds very good. Now, we're gonna take this, we're gonna add our wine. I always love dishes cooked with wine. It's something, especially, you know, I, I love it with chicken, but uh, but again, this, you know, similar type of uh, environment, but it's just something about it, the flavors. It just brings out the acidity in the wine, really brings out everything, and it also mm -hmm. needs that acidity to help break down the meat itself. So you need ah, that to break down the okay. protein, All otherwise, right. you know, it, it will get tough. Okay. You do need some sort of acidity. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna let this stay on the stovetop for about another three, four minutes. Okay. I'm gonna transfer it into our um, dish, our mm -hmm. casserole dish, put it in the oven, and like I said, you're looking at about 350. Okay. For uh, about an hour and a half, then we'll put the vegetables in and finish it off for another 45 minutes. Okay, sounds good, but that's, you know, great. You have all the initial stages of getting things done, then you mm -hmm. can walk away and do else. what else you need to do. Come back right. and, uh, and finish it up. That's right. It is a perfect Sunday dish. All right, that's what we'll do. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll come back again, put that in the oven. And of course, we're gonna be the, the time elapsed, hey, you know, two minute commercial break type of thing. But we'll have it all finished for you when we return. We'll be right back. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're back with Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra Restaurant in Hamilton. And the rabbit is done. That's the a wonderful blue pot. Done. Yes. <laughs> so again, time had passed. So it was in the oven at around 350. Yeah, we did it about an hour and a half mm -hmm. with the rabbit only. And then another 45 minutes, I put all those vegetables, put it in right into the pan and just let it roast. Oh, it smells amazing. Good combination of flavors there. And very, the very nice. And, whew, very good. Yeah, so we're going to pull some of this out and you can see how everything is caramelized and mm -hmm. coming along you have all those carrots and everything and now we do have quite a bit of sauce obviously from the white the wine and uh, yes. just reducing the butter and the oil and everything if you want you could add a cornstarch or some sort of a thickening agent to it and make a little thicker gravy if you okay. prefer okay, sure. I tend to like it like this where mm -hmm. it's a little bit lighter and mm, okay, that's yeah, pull this right over here all right, so as you played, I'll just remind everybody at home that uh, you can find uh, this recipe along with all of our other recipes on our website, terragreenhouses.com. And uh, this is good to share because you said this is one of your favorite dishes, right? This so. is one of my favorite dishes. Yeah, but, by far one of my favorite mm -hmm. dishes. It's just, you know, when the rabbit's all done and it's, you can see how it's all that golden. Looks, it looks great. And it smells awesome. You got those root vegetables. It's just a good comfort fall kind of dish. And is this exactly how you would eat it? Just like you at, at home, you would, no other accompaniments, just like this? Just like this, a vegetables. little salad on the side, okay, and, sure. and that's it. Mm -hmm. And that, that to me is, uh, I'm happy with that meal. And what, uh, what wine would you put with this, more? This one, you can go either way. You go yeah. white or red with that's this what one. I'm wondering. Yeah, okay. you could go white or red. If you're gonna go white, it's gotta be big. It's sure. gotta be a nice buttery Chardonnay. Chardonnay that yeah, would so be fantastic. Thinking. Yep. Um, and if you go red, you can go with a nice Chianti, a little bit lighter style. Okay, okay, kind of meet in the middle there. Yeah, let's. Very nice. Some, just let them know what we have. We have some sage in there, so they'll... Oh yeah, that's right, you can dress the plate. And that's perfect. So again, you could try this at home tomorrow if you want, go out and get all the ingredients at the market, and away you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have yourself a great weekend. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. 